I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Elizabeth Kuka, the Executive Director of ETC Labs. Liz, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks, Ashton. I'm excited to be here. You're very welcome. I'm excited as well. And let's dive right into it. If you could start by giving a little bit of background on what is Ethereum Classic Labs and how are you impacting the startup space, that would be a great place to start. Yeah, Ethereum Classic Labs, we're an accelerator that's dedicated to the advancement of blockchain technology with a focus on Ethereum Classic. So pretty straightforward. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I've been following Ethereum Classic since the day it was created and it's a great space to be in. And I know you guys are continuing to grow. Um, and with the help of the investment, there's a lot of startups that are popping up utilizing Ethereum Classic right now. And you also work as the principal in Digital Finance Group and make investments into EDC Labs startups. So could you talk about so far in 2020, what has happened with ETC Labs? Have you made, are you actively still making investments and has your strategy changed so far? Yeah, so we've changed a little bit. Um, in 2019, we hosted two uh, startup cohorts and we were doing safe agreements at that time. And then since then, we've actually switched to a grants model, which is far more founder friendly, especially in such a nascent space where teams are really looking to build and grow their community and figure out what works and what doesn't work without the pressure of um, immediate returns. So we've switched to grants for the most part. Uh, through Digital Finance Group, we have made a few investments as well, uh, including Swarm, Chainsafe, um, and one other. It's slipping my mind right now. But um, And then on the grant side, we've made around three. So we're doing pretty good. We're still pretty active. That's great. And can you talk a little bit about what you look for when you're looking to invest into startups that are looking to move into ETC Labs? Yeah, it's, it's probably not that much different than, say, um, a pre-seed investor or an angel investor. It's probably pretty similar. So we look for teams that have strong tech and a strong technical background. We look for teams that have um, a pretty large community or supporters who we know are either going to support their technology and adopt it, or they're going to participate in a token sale and be champions of the company. Um, and then we also ideally work with teams that already have a few paying customers. So it's, it's pretty mm -hmm. traditional to pre-seed investment, even on the grant side. Definitely. And of course, paying customers and, and traction and product market fit obviously would be huge if they've already ticked those boxes as well. And I guess I'm a little curious about you know, one of the trending topics with a lot of startups has been social impact and economic impact and how they're making a change in the communities around them. Do you consider those as uh, potential markers for investment that um, you know would be good with ETC Labs? Yeah, it definitely is. So there's three categories that we focus on. One is financial inclusion. A second is dev for devs, at least that's how I call it. It's kind of like tooling and infrastructure. And then the third is in impact in emerging markets. So financial inclusion and impact in emerging markets definitely falls into that category. Um, and we've also worked with UNICEF. Um, we made a pretty large donation there, uh, sent a large donation their way, and also have made a commitment to invest or provide funding to startups that they work with through their blockchain innovation program. Um, and then not only that, but I'd say, you know, just to make sure that this isn't coming across as like, oh, we're just doing this because we're supposed to be doing this. But um, James Woe, our founder and chairman, you know, he comes from a philanthropic background and he was uh, making in-kind donations to ETC before ETC Core joined Labs. Um, and Terry comes from, you know, working with the United Nations and working mm -hmm. in emerging markets on innovation. Uh, and I was formerly working in like the public school space, nonprofits, environmental science background. So I just say all of this um, just to make it clear that it, we're, we're certainly not doing it um, just as lip service. Yeah, well, that's really interesting to hear. And you know, I've spoken with James and Terry as well. I didn't know he was making in-kind donations to ETC. So that's really interesting. And I did read- Yeah, before the... Labs. Yeah, beforehand. Yeah, wow, that's great. Uh, and I did read the news on ETC Labs partnering up with UNICEF to drive blockchain solutions. That sounds really interesting. And it's great to see you know, mainstream uh, charity being able to implement blockchain. Can you talk a little bit more about you know, what initiatives are you working with them um, and how does the blockchain fit into those solutions 
Yeah, so UNICEF has around 12 different areas of, of focus and they cover everything from clean water to reliable energy, um, getting access to, to credit and loans and, and so on and so forth. And so for ETC Labs, it's really about you know diversifying our portfolio and diversifying the teams that we're working with. Um, and so for us, um, a few examples of teams that we've worked with um, include OS City, and OS City is a GovTech smart city solution. And with them, we focus specifically on their artisan project. So what that means is their artisan project is based in um, outside of Mexico City, working with uh, street artists or um, uh, like women mostly, and that's probably not street artists as you and I know in, in uh, California or Vancouver, but street artists who are like knitting and crocheting and making bags and sweaters and scarves, and they're doing proof of origin or proof mm -hmm. that um, those those handicrafts that you or I might buy as a tourist aren't coming from a factory. Mm -hmm. And so that's one project that we worked on with OS City. A second is uh, W3, also known as Telemesh, mm -hmm. who um, are working with refugee camps and helping provide uh, mesh networking solutions so that you mm -hmm. can buy, sell, and trade data when you're in a place where all you need to know is that your family uh, knows that you're safe and that you can get access to, to healthcare if there's any mm -hmm. emergency alerts, that you can have that data provided even if you don't have um, access to a paying network. So uh, W3 Telemesh is another one. Um, a third team that we're working with that I'm pretty excited about, this actually, this one's not through UNICEF, is PingMe. And PingMe is a microloan provider um, throughout the continent of, of Africa. And so with them, they're um, helping with credit scores, they're helping find um, small businesses that are looking for loans and helping with the entire um, loan credit process from beginning to end, yeah. um, kind of like an M-Pesa, but um, a bit a bit different mm -hmm. at the same time. Hmm. Very interesting and a little bit of a different and a wide spectrum of solutions, which are really cool. And with that OS City having these street artists, you know, proving the origin of their supplies, that sort of reminds me of you know supply chain management and I've heard that blockchain uh, is sort of the ultimate solution for supply chain and it's really going to be uh, integrated through you know hopefully all of the world commerce as it continues to grow do you see ETC labs focusing on supply chain or origin uh, you know moving forward it's a possibility. Um, it's not one of our focus areas. Mm -hmm. We've worked with a couple of teams through supply chain. Um, and the reason why supply chain isn't an area of focus is because it tends to be an enterprise solution. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're a public blockchain, fully open source. Um, not to say that we, we can't do a hybrid model where mm -hmm. it's partially private or par partially off chain and partially on chain. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, we're really focused on peer to peer solutions for the most part. Um, and so supply chain is is a little bit more tricky. Usually when you have mm -hmm. consortium and multiple vendors interacting, it, it tends to need to have like a, a fully private solution. So it, it's not an area that we've that we've looked to um, mm -hmm. as much. Yeah, well, okay, that's great. And I guess that leads me to the next part about you know, the democratization of finance. And you know, with Ethereum's protocol, there's been this major movement with decentralized finance and DeFi where you can use smart contracts to, you know, lessen the intermediaries and be able to take out loans. And I'm guessing this is a major initiative in emerging markets and places where there's a lot of unbanked and uh, uh, people. So is Ethereum Classic Labs also looking at potential DeFi projects and maybe moving some of those Ethereum projects into Ethereum Classic? We're certainly looking. Um, and any anyone who's listening and wants to apply, uh, feel free to contact us at etclabs.org to let us know. Um, but we're certainly looking um, and we've made some headway. So for example, we've recently worked with Chainsafe who built Chainbridge, um, which is a solution for ETC to connect with DeFi, with MakerDAO specifically. And so we're, we're currently working on solutions that um, instead of reinventing the wheel, we just plug right in. Mm -hmm. um, but additionally, we are looking for stablecoin projects to work with. Mm. Very cool. And how else are you expanding ETC Labs throughout the rest of 2020? Are you looking for more team members or strategic partners or more startups to invest into? Yeah, always looking to expand and grow. Um, we've been working with a few different universities lately, um, and that's in a number of ways. Uh, Lehigh University is one, they're over on the East Coast. And uh, with them, we're working with both undergrad and graduate students to build out solutions on Ethereum Classic. So that's, that's pretty neat. Um, and we're looking to do the same with University of North Texas. We've done some talks um, at Stanford with their extended learning, both on blockchain and with their angel investor courses. 
Um, we've worked with blockchain at Berkeley with their Accelerate program. So universities, we've definitely made um, a bit of an inroad. Um, and then additionally, we work with other funds. Um, Unventures is one of them. So it, in, in other words, um, uh, growing our network in terms of investors, startups, researchers, universities, and corporates as well, um, and, and working with great people and, and people who want to work with us as well. Hmm. So kind of having a business-friendly relationships as much as possible. That's great. And yeah, it's great to get into the universities. And uh, I think that that's a big push towards, you know, all of those university students getting out into a career early and getting into this innovative technology. So please continue with that. Um, and if there are more universities, uh, scholars, partners, just community members that are looking to find out more about ETC Labs, what's the best way for them to learn more and to reach out? Yeah, they can find us at etclabs.org. They can either go to the Accelerate section or Grants. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Venture underscore this or at Telegram at Liz TK. Um, and otherwise, they can ping you, Ashton, probably, and you can uh, send them over. Definitely will do. And I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. Thank you so much for your time, Liz. It's been a pleasure hearing about ETC Labs. All the best for the rest of 2020. And let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, great talking with you, Ashton. Have a good evening.